So the days are starting to bleed together on the Bergie Blender a little bit. As yesterday's joke of the day was in the day before his episode. I, um, we are leaving New York City. We have decided sporadically to go to Connecticut to eat at Scott's Lobster Dock, maybe, and see the ocean in Connecticut. Because that's what we do, weird stuff that is not normal to do. Um, you excited to see Scott's Lobster So here's the thing, Scott's Lobster Dock. I'm not excited to see that, I'm excited to see the ocean. Is Casey Neistat's favorite restaurant. We're kind of going there for Gavin. I'm gonna say we're going there for Gavin so it doesn't look like we're going two hours out of the way for me and Amanda to see the restaurant in the hometown where Casey Neistat grew up. We're not doing that, right? Right, it's for Gavin. You're welcome, Gavin. We're gonna eat at Scott's Lobster Dock, but uh, there's really nothing there for the kids to eat that they're gonna like. Even Gavin, who wanted to go, would eat nothing there. So we're in Casey Neistat's hometown, and we're gonna eat at the Camp Dog, which is also one of his favorite restaurants. He loves the Camp Dog. Has he ever said that? Yeah, at least 10 times. He's like, if I can't go to Scott's Lobster Dock, I'm going to Camp Dog. said the Kardashians. I haven't been able to watch Casey. Oh my god, and I didn't even we didn't see go to the Scott's Kardashian. Lobster Dock. Sure, all there is is seafood and I hate seafood. We went to Scott's Lobster Dock. But I didn't get to take the picture of the sign. Did you at least vlog the, vlog the sign? Yeah. Alright. That's good enough. Now I'm going to drive down the road to uh... To what? Body Waters. <gasps> service area outside of Albany. My legs hurt. I've been driving a while. People got to be. My former Justin. Amanda, can I go in your pool? Alright, come on, let's go. Amanda. Oh God, hurry up. Amanda. I almost hit that car. Take some poop. 
<laughs> All right, so we did go to New London, and we saw Casey Neistat's childhood home. Fail. Success. Fail. But we did eat at Scott's Lobster Dock. Fail. Yeah. But we did get coffee at Casey's dad's coffee shop. Fail. All right, yeah, okay. However, we did go on the beach that Casey goes on. All right, bad experience. Really had no traffic all the way from Connecticut to our throughway exit, ten minutes from our house. This is bull. Poop. Yeah. This is ridiculous. I feel like I'm in Taco Bell's drive-thru. Yeah, that's about right. Probably takes long. Probably. And there's usually only cars oh, well, about. I'll tell you what, if I don't get a cheesy gordita crunch at the end, I'm going to be pissed. Say something. Yeah, say something. You're okay. You're okay. Socks. New York City was fun. I was entertained by New York City. I am so glad to be home. Where my kids can run in the road if they really needed to. <laughs> They're not gonna. It wasn't that scary though. It wasn't scary, it was just busy. And you're not used to it. We're not used to it. I was telling Gavin, there's streets in Geneva that I might not have walked on for fear of muggings or such. At night. Uh, like late at night. Me and Gavin both officially decided that there is not a street in Geneva that we would have an issue with walking on now. As the slums in Geneva are like the good parts of New York City. Looks wise, anyway. So, yeah, we're good. It's good. We're going to Walmart to price bikes. Alright, got a bike. Still have the car, but I got a bike. The brakes are really squeaky though. All right, so I just kind of want to touch on the 9-11 Memorial. Um, of all the things I saw, it kind of had the biggest impact on me this weekend. I distinctively remember exactly what I was doing on September 11, 2001. I wasn't in New York City. I wasn't anywhere near ground zero. I knew no one that was affected by it at all, zero people. I was at work. I went into work. I was just an assistant manager at the time at McDonald's. I went into the back area of the drive-thru. I had to cover a break and I was taking money. It was probably 8.15 in the morning-ish, I guess. And a customer came through and said, did you hear what just happened to the Twin Towers in New York City? And I said, no. And she said, well, a plane just hit one. And then a few, I don't know, 20 minutes later, somebody else said a plane hit another one. I worked all day with no knowledge of really what was going on. I remember getting home and just watching CNN live coverage and CNN coverage of the footage from earlier in the day. And I watched that until probably midnight from 5 o'clock. Um, and I don't think, I'm going to be honest, I don't think it had a huge effect on me. I wasn't like... Oh my goodness, I don't, it was weird, but I was 20, you know, it didn't, nothing about that situation really made me go, oh my god, I was, I wasn't one of those people, and I'm not going to stand here and tell you I was one of those people that was instantly like, in tears and so it didn't happen for me. I felt bad for the families, I felt bad for what was happening, I was disgusted by the terrorist acts, but I wasn't, I wasn't in tears because I wasn't directly connected. Yesterday when we walked into the presence of the North and the South Tower and you could see the pools and you could see the names of all the people on the towers, an eeriness I guess set in, something set into me and I don't even know how to explain it. Uh, I started to get choked up, I started to feel emotional, but this is me 15 years later at 35 and there's 
there's no experience like it. I've never felt that way before. To know you're standing in a place where so much tragedy occurred is just, there's no words for it. Um, so I know it's been a long time. It's been 15 years since it happened and I'm probably past due, but uh, thoughts and prayers to the families of the lives that were lost, to the lives that were lost, to the survivors, to the FDNY, the NYPD, and pretty much anybody else that helped out. I don't want to drag this out forever, but not being a part of it and then going to see something like that, it does something to you. Give your kids an extra hug today. I don't know. Just think about what you have and wh how quick it could be taken away. You know, as we were walking through there, I said to Gavin, I said, you know, there was tourists just like us just walking through this area the day that happened. Looking up at the sky, watching the planes, looking at the reflections in the buildings. And they didn't have any idea that what happened was about to happen. That's how precious life is, that in a blink, it could be gone. <laughs> It's time for the Landon Bergie Joke of the Day! Oh, I got a good idea. Considering we we're in uh, New York City and went to Trump Towers, do you want to do like a Donald Trump joke? Mm -hmm. Do you have one? Yeah. Oh, okay. If Trump becomes president, what type of plan would you take? I don't know. What kind of plan would you take? Hair Force One. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'll be here all night. Thank you, Landon. The end.